It is 2023. We made it. Yes. And here at Alcomix Bar, we're excited for another year of video and creation and talking cocktails with all of you. Yeah. So our first video of the year, we decided to talk about five essential bottles. Well, they're not even essential. Five upgraded bottles to add to your essential collection. There you go. That sounds way better. <laughs> Leandro from Educated Barfly, Anders, and other YouTubers have done videos where what you should have for your essential bar. And we pretty much agree with what they have. So yeah. your beef eaters, your Tito's. Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse, old granddad, just your quality price point, low price point spirits to have for your cocktail making adventure. So instead of us redoing the same video that everyone has done so far, we decided to do five other bottles. Yes. That you should pick up and enjoy because they just are fun. So before we get started, any guesses in the comments of what we are going to show you today? Well, wait. Do, do, do. <laughs> Which one do you want to do first? Um, let's start with the gin. The gin. Because it's my favorite. All right, here we go. Okay. Hendrix. Yes. I don't know why I slammed it down, but I did. So I'm not sure. trying to. Yeah, I'm not trying to do the whole under slide thing. I'm trying to do the new Alchemix thing. Slam it down. That's okay. I know. <laughs> Hendrix Gin. Yes. It is a solid gin. Yeah. It is really well balanced. Yes. It has a cucumber roundness. Cucumber, cucumber and rose notes that right. really add a little bit of something to your standard gin. Right. Just a little bit more refreshing gimlet. Yeah. Basil smash. You know, we could talk about all of their lines or all their different expressions. The mm -hmm. midnight summer solstice or midsummer solstice, the orium, lunar. the lunar and the neptunia. Right. So any really those bottles, I think would be a nice addition to your home bar. It helps just elevate cocktails to a different way adds a nice little complexity to it. Right. Interesting fact that we learned today Hendrix has only been around since 1999 so so I've been around longer than Hendrix <laughs> <laughs> it's a great bottle it's relatively the price point on it is not too bad like standard 750 is like 35 yeah, if I remember just, correctly 30 just... 35 and the reason that this is an upgrade to your standard is like this is something that you can take away the heavy juniper Mm -hmm. isn't something that you or the people you're making cocktails for enjoy. Yep. So you can still get the gin notes with the juniper, but the cucumber kind of mellows all of that out. 35 to $38 for a 750. Again, yep. it's not that high a price point. It's just sometimes people just don't really, I think some people just assume it's more expensive than what it is. Right. Let's go. With your favorite next. My favorite. Oh, lucky me. Oh, I'm back. <gasps> Boom, bam, boom, <laughs> kazam. <laughs> Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Is it one of my favorite sipping bourbons? Yes, it is. And yes. here's the reason, two reasons why. It is $60, which is, it is a little on the higher, I would say mid, mid range price point for bourbons these yes. days, but it's also readily available. <laughs> Yeah. And that is a big factor to where I can just go out and buy it. Not like, damn, I wonder if it's going to be there. Or not. It's just available. Like it's not like Buffalo Trace or Eagle Rare right. or some of these other ones that are just being imported. I mean, honestly, right. at the end of the yeah. day, what's nice also about this is you can find this at Sam's Club, but probably Costco too, for about $48 a bottle. That's about two or three times a year. They'll have a pallet for about $48, which yeah. is also, that's an amazing price point for this bourbon. Yep. It's solid, it's smooth, it has those nice vanilla oak notes that you look for. It is a, it is a little bit sweeter, complex. Yes, it is definitely complex. It's just, it's just, I believe it's just a solid sipping bourbon on the rock neat. Um, it does go really well in a gold rush cocktail. Uh, just that honey and that lemon juice really complement mm -hmm. this specific one. I don't drink them all the time. We don't drink them all the time out of this, but once in a while it just sounds really good. This is definitely a bourbon upgrade that is definitely worth buying. So your old granddad, your essential bourbon is your mixing. Mm -hmm. This is a good this sipping. This will be your sipper. Yep, exactly. <sighs> Smith and Cross. <laughs> Smith and Cross, we had a hate love relationship, I think, at first, right? Like we weren't really thrilled about it when we first got it. We didn't know how to use it. Right, we didn't know what we were getting into this. So right. if you're not familiar, Smith & Cross is a Jamaican pot still. I'm just gonna smell it. Yeah, it's a traditional Jamaican pot still rum. We are not the biggest rum experts. We love our rum. Um, we are definitely in the past year, our rum 
has grown into a wild weed that just doesn't it's, stop growing. It, it's borderline become an obsession. Yes, <laughs> but uh, there's many YouTubers that know more about rum, but basically anything from Jamaica in these pot stills, they're gonna have a higher ABV. This one is, I believe, 50%, I think this 57. one's navy strength, right? Yeah, yep, navy strength, 57%. So it is a lot hotter heater on the proof side. It just adds a complexity. It's banana bread in a bottle. Right. But like boozy. <laughs> right. You get the molasses, you get this, like you said, banana bread, uh -huh. some of that Jamaican kind of funk that everyone always talks about. It just kind of, it's not an off putting smell, it's just it's, different. It's overripe banana. Yeah, there you go. That's the best way to describe it. It just adds a complexity. You could definitely drink this on the rock or neat, but it's best used when you blend it with other rums to yep. make rum cocktails. Yes. So, so you're, it'll sub out a quarter ounce in a daiquiri. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely start off with a, on the lower side yeah. because of how aggressive, in a good way, that this tastes. Right, and because of how boozy it is. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't want to overpower right. all of your other ingredients, but this will add a nice little spice mm -hmm. to oh. your cocktail. It's like using tahini instead of salt on your margaritas. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely highly recommend this. About $30, give or take a couple bucks either way. And I'm pretty sure this, again, is readily available throughout the world. It's very popular. Right. Our agave upgrade. Del Maguey Vita Mezcal. Mezcal in general mm -hmm. has definitely become one of our favorite spirits lately. It has become one of my favorites to try in a cocktail. Right. Even, I would say even just try in general. We rocks. Just had, we just we, we went to San Diego and we went to Mexico. We had the uh, we had more opportunity to try it this year than we right. had or last, last year, year than we had previously. Right. So if you're not familiar, mezcal is uh, a roasted uh, agave and that's distilled. It is just gives these nice smoky, deep, rich notes to it, but you still got that agave flavor, which you're kind of used to in tequilas and rep, or yeah, just tequilas in general. It definitely adds complexity to cocktail. Similar to Smith & Cross, a lot of people will split base this in a cocktail with like a Reposado or a Blanc and give it just another dimension. Mm -hmm. But then there's also cocktails out there that are, this is the star. Um, Anders right. has his See No Evil. Yes, um, highly recommend. Yes, it's fantastic. Um, and then there's uh, a the mezcal. Oaxaca Old Fashioned. Oaxaca Old Fashioned, a mezcal sour is great. So all your, you're doing is you're getting that bright, vibrant flavor from the agave, but then right. you're also just getting this deep, rich, roasty flavor from the distilling process. So mezcal ha comes in a bunch of flavor profiles. It's kind of like gin where it is across the board. Yep. Mezcal can either be like grassy and earthy. Yep. Or roasty and smoky. This Delmage Vita is on the roasty smoky side. And this comes in about $38, give or take, you know, some places 40, a little bit cheaper. So it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than some of your other tequila bottles that you might have at home. But again, it's just, you're adding to an addition right. and just using it as your main spirit for the most part. And as far as mezcal goes, it's it's one of the better priced ones. It's There's a reason why you'll see this mezcal. If, if a restaurant or a bar only has one mezcal, this is usually the one that they mm -hmm. have. Because again, it's readily available and the price point's low and it's just a solid mezcal to start off yes. with. Yes, yes. So yeah, that is our agave choice. Now our last one is our modifier. I guess you call it modifier, right? Or, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it can be a base. It can be a base. Amari is a category that's been kind of blowing up mm -hmm. really these past 18 months, I would say. In Steve, the bartender group, there are certain people, won't mention any names, Peter or uh, anyone else that really love that <laughs> stuff. It's the best way to describe what Amari is. Um, Amari are Italian herbal liqueurs. Oftentimes it's a lot of orange or citrus zest and then Herbal, zasparella, menthol. Yeah. Those are the flavors that some of them can be. They don't all have to have those certain flavor profiles. Right. There are some that taste like Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. There are some that taste like, like the Amaro Nonino is a bitter orange, a right. little bit floral, a little bit spicy. Yep. And this particular one is a multi-generational family uh, distillery and its base is made out of grappa. So it's going to kind of have that kind of refreshing white wine kind of base to it also. Right, because grappa is essentially a great brandy, yeah? Yeah. This bottle is is on the more expensive side when it comes to Amar. It is about 60 bucks up to 65 I've seen. It is the most approachable because yes of how on the sweeter side it is and not as bitter as some of the 
other ones like uh, Mothenangro or Averna. Right, which are cheaper, but if you're not familiar with Amari, it's not gonna be something that you generally would dive into. Yep, so Paper Plain is probably the most well-known pop, well popular cocktail that uses this. Sam Ross specifically uses this to complement the bourbon, the lemon juice, and the Aperol, because Aperol also has those orange notes in there, so they yes. kind of just complement each other very well. This was probably considered my most used spirit in 2022 by some people. It was his crutch. I would definitely highly recommend this bottle. Again, a little bit goes a long way mm -hmm. um, with flavor profiles and the use of it. What, half an ounce is probably the most used in the um, Well, paper planes, three fourths. Well, yeah. But so, like, but in the general, yeah, use. half ounce. So that is our five additional bottles that we recommend for your home bar after you have your essentials ready yes. to go and you're looking for a little bit more. What's that next tier of spirits I want to pick up? Yep. Um, we recommend these, we use them all the time, we enjoy them. And I know a lot of other people enjoy them out there too. Right, out of all of the bottles on our wall, there are very few of them that we have bought repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. And all five of these have, we've purchased at least three bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. given all of our options, the fact that we keep gravitating back to these should say a lot. Yeah. Let us know, have you tried any of these? What's your like favorite next tier bottle that yeah. you like well like what's your favorite you know mezcal or rum let us know in the comments we'd love to know it so 2023 we have some exciting things happening here at alchemix bar we are going to go back to two videos a week starting in a, in a couple weeks where tuesday we're going to create the cocktail talk about it and then friday we're going to do the comparison side of things which we really always enjoy doing mm -hmm. and then we're also starting a podcast tbd as far as when that's happening when, right yes <laughs> when that when that's going to happen uh we're calling it, do you want to start a tab? And so we, we're excited about it. We're gonna keep talking about cocktails and liquor, but more on the- The, indus the industry side of things. Yes. So if you are a bartender or you have witnessed an experience, an event in a bar where a patron or a bartender has been snarky or terrible. Um, I have no idea anything about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, look us up on Instagram and uh, send us your stories. Yes. So we so, can read them. Yep, that will be out here hopefully very soon. But yeah, we're excited for 2023 and we can't wait to grow and keep learning cocktails with you guys. <laughs> I don't know.